I'm very excited for us to dig into this uh, three-part podcast with you as somebody who I think it's very fair to say is constantly testing his own limits. And it's with great respect that I say that because, um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are obviously, you know, on the grind or whatever, you know, as they say, but your story is a remarkable one. And so let's, uh, let's jump into it. So let's take it all the way back to the beginning. Where are you from? Well, at the very beginning is 1984 in Marshall, Texas, <laughs> small, small town. And, uh, I guess it's growing. It's starting to be more known on the map, but yep, a little country town and uh, 30 minutes from uh, Freeport, Louisiana, two and a half hours from uh, Dallas, Texas. And you once told me that if you're from Texas, you love it. And that being said, describe what makes growing up in East Texas different. Than the other place. I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe it's just the sense of pride. It, it's like the state is just a. I guess you could even look at it from uh, the national side. The state is saying, "Hey, we're a country of our own." <laughs> so once you're from Texas, you know you, you got a lot of pride. It's probably the only states I could think kind of similar is New York and um, nah, pride is New York. I started to say California, but California is just a different vibe. Yeah, when I was out there, it's a pride. The, I I don't know no other way to kind of put it. I'll probably be cutting it short if I say anything more than it's the pride and we're just uh, Texas strong. That makes sense. That makes sense. I've I've known some Texas strong people in my life. Um, so what would you say you were like as a kid growing up? Hmm. As a kid growing up, I said at the very beginning, I was a, a shy guy. I was a quiet at the very beginning. And um, as I was growing up, it might have been in seventh, eighth grade when I started being way more outgoing, more of an extrovert, as a lot of them like to say, and uh, trying, to, trying to go to all the gatherings. And then starting in the sports, you know, as well, it was uh, football, basketball, and track. Yeah, so that was more when I started hitting my stride that swore like, I want to go get it. Yeah, I want to do everything. And, you know, obviously you you told me that you um you played some high school football mm -hmm. with the great Adrian Peterson, aka A D all day. Um I know that you also mentioned Reggie McNeil, who was just an absolute beast. Couldn't believe that guy. Run, run around, throwing the football. Um, even as a track and field guy, I did a little study on him. He run in the hundred meter dash in ten three. He, he went to state. Yeah, he, he had, I don't know if he won state, but I, I know he placed in state. But yeah, he Adrian Peterson. We played against Palestine. Uh, I think it was his first year, but he was on his varsity team, and yeah, he ran for about two hundred yards against us. And I think he lost by a call. Right, it's been a little bit. By like uh, by TN, I think we had lost, but it was only because dude was just us. It was like a man playing uh, in, a, in a high school league. It's kind of like that 12 year old people talking about out there in Florida who looks like a college football player, but he's only 12. And then uh, Reggie McNeil just was a petite, fast little guy and had a big head, though, man. I do remember that, though. Yeah. <laughs> but he was a skinny little dude, man. I like, Got a big call on head, man, but but he is fast though. So once he get to scrambling, he busy watching uh watching them receivers. You know they out of there. They definitely loans to it. So what position first in football were you? Offense, defense. First uh, receiver. Yeah, I was a receiver, and then they had me playing strong safety. Uh, that was that was the initial position for three years. And then in hoops. Basketball, I was strictly, I still, I would say power four, but they really kind of had me playing center based off the height, but I would always end up sticking to four. Which one would you say that you uh, were a little bit more naturally inclined to? I would say between the three and four. Like, uh, I think it was more when I had the, the junior, senior years when they had me more like the wing slash power four because. 
boys, they they were getting bigger, and I was just skinny around that time. I was just tall and skinny, so it's kind of when they is banging. It's a lot of mighty to get around. Like think about shack size cats down there in the paint. Why? <laughs> I'm just I'm I was skinny like an ED. I I didn't pick up weight so I joined the military. Honestly, yeah, I was like 177 when I graduated Austin. Just to give you an idea how small it was. Wow. And you know I never asked you this, but how exactly tall are you? Uh, six two. Some say six three. So I just I usually just tell them six two, but. I've been told as tall as 6'3 that I have here. Yeah, so 6'2", six, 6'3", six, six, 177 is not exactly thick. <laughs> and you're, not body, you're not bodying up a lot of like sound love. Four, I think, on the T. So when you get, because uh, our senior year, we made it to the final four in high school playoffs, 5'8", but you got to think height start, it started changing the, the the level of start changing, you know, once you make it to playoffs. So it's it's not like your division where you know everybody and we've been playing against them from you know seventh grade to to your senior year. Once you can start running to, to the other cats in the state, then you play them teams uh who are recruited and 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 it's different. <laughs> we never played a Oak Hill or any of those cats because they were a lead as well. Because I, I think might have been. Camelo then was at Oak Hill around that time. Had, had we been lucky enough to play against one of them in like a tournament or something, but uh, yeah, they were stacked. Just to say that, yeah, like Advantage was one of those teams we played against uh, in Louisiana where they recruited and you could see the difference size-wise once you uh, played against a school like that. So you, you called out um, California sports. I, I uh, think I mentioned, I I did football and, and track in college, and mm -hmm. you know I remember California being about as competitive I felt uh, as there was a place in the country. But at the same time, you know, just given the competitive nature that would seem is just inherent uh, to the nature of all Texas sports, you know, I don't care if it's baseball, football, track, whatever. Would you mm -hmm. say that the expectations or learning curve from like going to being a kid to adult is faster and steeper in Texas. Like do you just go from like, like you said, like fifth, sixth grade to suddenly you're just like expected to just man up or talk about that dynamic just a little bit. Yeah. I, I think Texas uh, definitely uh, prioritize football more than mostly high school football. I, I, I'll say that movie Friday night lights is a good example. If you're in a smaller town, how they'll shut down stores, uh, because you got the varsity team playing that Friday, and everybody's going to watch the game. Vice, when I was in San Diego, San Diego's still going on. <laughs> Why people playing games? Of course, that's a much bigger city, but yeah, I, I'll say here, multiple cities I've been to, checking out their culture. Yeah, they they wasn't shutting it down like uh, Texas was. It's just a different uh, it's a different culture, and you know. Yeah, they they just move totally different. I would say. So was that competitive energy that you're that you're from? Was that part of the motivation for you to join the uh, U.S. military? Yeah, and and I uh, you could say that I had a, a uncle who uh, retired out the army, and I had another one who was a chaplain, but he went from being active to doing the reserves as a chaplain to retired out that. Uh, I don't know though it was about the drilling, but then he ended up pulling out. But having a family, you know, actually served that kind of motivation as well. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I, my, both sides of my family are military. I, like I mentioned, I did did some recruiting in college. Uh, got a kind of respect for everybody who serves. So, yeah. walk that back. So you're you're thinking about joining the armed forces. Obviously, you have all the different branches at your disposal. And you end up choosing the United States Navy. So just describe describe that process. Well, <laughs> it's actually kind of a buddy process. Like uh, I was uh, I was indecisive on what I wanted to do as far as uh, going to college, and I was like, nobody didn't want to give me a full ride on the sports side. So I was kind of frustrated on that end. And then that was when um, 
I had the recruiter who came over and he's giving me the sales pitch, but that wasn't what actually moved me to go there. I, I actually joined the military was idly done about it was I, I joined it out of frustration because I didn't get the full scholarship in sports. But, you know, once, once I served or decided to join, I was like fully committed, you know? So it, it was more my frustration that nobody didn't give me a full ride or nobody didn't give me uh you know, my options that I wanted. And that was why I joined. And, and like I said, once I joined, I was all in though. So that that's why my, what do you want to call it? Uh, evaluation or, or, or transcript is so, uh, in depth as far as once I was in the military. And then you knew that the Navy was the path for you for sure, like straight away, or you were kind of thinking army or in Air Force and Navy. Yeah. I was between Air Force and Navy cause, uh, it was after nine 11 and then, um, <clears throat> army, maybe I seen a lot of national guard, but I, I really, uh, it didn't seem like they did too much to me, but. And then Marines, I, I didn't, I didn't see any out there in uh, Marshall. So it was more between Navy and Air Force because everybody was saying Air Force didn't do that. And so I was more like, ah, the Navy travels more. I want to do the Navy. So it, it was kind of, you know, from a younger mindset, it was more that perspective. Now that makes sense. So how old were you when you signed up? I was 17 and uh, I didn't turn 18 until... Cause my mom and dad had to sign it for me to actually be, be in. And my mom didn't want me to go. <laughs> she didn't want me to go to the service cause uh, my oldest brother tried. It was something that happened with his asthma, the white, why he wasn't able to, to serve, but he tried to harm me. And then my mom was like, nah, I don't want you to go. She wanted me to go to college cause uh, everybody on their side went to college, but the Navy it kind of became the option after uh, I took the ASVAB and they was telling me like the job options. And it was like between our chair controller, operational specialist, which is like an office gig, or their knockoff controllers, I guess. And, you know, so basically that, that was what made you choose it because a lot of people was like, hey, that's actually a good uh, career line to fall into. And that was that was more what led to that decision between our, the Navy and her. Okay, so just... Uh, because a lot of this kind of stuff gets technical. Um, specifically, what kind of path or track were you on in, in, in the Navy? Just for everybody listening. Yeah, the the path or track I was on, uh, or my job was air traffic controller or, or AC, as they called it in the Navy, for short. And um, after going through that stressful school, because <laughs> the school the failure rate was ridiculous. Yeah. I think it's like an 85% failure rate, <clears throat> but it's lower the people though with that job. But, but the path, um, our child and children. Yeah. I, I was, I dove in deep waters and, and I had to, had to suck it up. I had to quit trying to party because at first I was trying to party and it was like, you feel one more test. <laughs> You're out of there. You're going to be undesignated, which uh, I had heard horror stories about it. So that kind of motivated me to, to to bob down and actually start studying and take it more serious. Yeah. And designated basically means that you, you don't have much of a choice as to what you're doing. You, you basically undesignated is like, um, I guess, so for people who are not familiar with it, the Navy, undesignated is like being the janitor slash. Trying to think of a nice way to say, try to keep it PG 13 or Disney, as they say. But yeah, basically, like being a janitor or a secretary to to the entry level position. So, so it's like you're doing all the crap work. You, uh, if it's a job that's dirty, where it's all the chains, you got to pick those up, throw them around your shoulder, pull them out. You know, throwing you the one throwing the anchor down and railing that joint up. You the one outside of the ship that's peeling the paint and repainting the ship for those who don't know. Ship get painted by 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 the undesignated our our bosun's mate, but yeah, and and when they explained that to me, my buddy who actually got me into working out Samuel Perkins, uh, when he was explaining it because he's a designated guy, but he was he 
went through the requirements to go to the school, that was what made me actually bog down and be like, all right, I got to stay real because I'm not trying to do that. If that's what you was doing. Yeah, once he explained it, I was like, I'm not trying to do grot work. But grot without the gun. Yeah, it's like, it's just, yeah, digging holes for poop and burying it. Yeah, I'm not trying to do all that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, w- without a doubt, there's a lot of things that people, of course, have no idea that happen with oh, yeah. with a with a with a group of people as big as the military. So you said that you were in San Diego. Where was the first place that you went? Like I guess where did you do your basic training? Oh no, my basic training was uh, in O'Hare, Illinois, basically Chicago. Yeah, Chicago, and and I went out there October fifteen, and I did I love I was like a grad and go. December like ninth, like right before Christmas, December nineteenth, and it was freaking freezing. Cause in Texas we didn't get that type of winter. <laughs> so when I see people skin cracking, cause it was so damn cold, and uh, lips cracking, cause you know our lips was getting chapped, and ain't like they was like giving us chapstick and stuff in boot camp. I never had wore a scarf when I was in Texas, so you know with my nose running and having wearing a scarf, I'm like, why is this thing so wet? I'm like, man, it sucks. Cause this is just wet from me breathing, and then yeah, yeah, that that was new. Had to stay in the building because uh, snow was so high. Yeah, that that was kind of a little weird. So you go from the training facility, which I've seen in Chicago, mm-hmm. to next stop is San Diego, or where? No, actually, uh, the next stop they 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 see you to the A school, which is uh, I guess Academy School, and, and that was where you have to vert basically get trained on uh your position that that you uh qualify for which was air traffic patrol position so i was there for six months in pensacola florida which leaving chicago pensacola wasn't bad at all winter wise yeah so i was out there from january to june yeah from like january to june i've heard I've heard good things about the experience in Pensacola, generally, generally speaking. So, oh, yeah. and then how did you eventually make your way to Greece? Well, at the Pensacola, when I graduated A school, I went to Virginia Beach, Virginia, and I was out there for two years, a little under two years. And when I left Virginia Beach, Virginia, that was when I went to Suda Bay Creek, Greece. Yeah, so an island right on the outskirts of Greece. I was out there a year, and I was actually going to extend, but that was at that moment when it was, uh, I was at that moment where it was like, all right, I'm almost at that point where I could re-enlist without going into my extension. <laughs> that way I get paid for it instead of just doing an extension. And uh, I had a chief who kept telling me, or maybe a senior chief, but he was just like, hey, if you're going to stay in, you don't need to extend out here because by extending out there in Greece, I wouldn't have to go to the ship. So I was just thinking about it from a, I don't want to go to the ship. I don't heard stories about the ship. So I started off in shore duty. Now I could extend out here, and that counts as a sea duty time, which my rotation as air traffic control is five years at shore three years at sea. So me just doing two years there, I would have been another five years at shore. <laughs> and just basically how a lot of them, I forgot what they called it, forgot the word, but it, it's basically, I would have been like a Navy guy who never touched the ship. But he was like, you want to go up to the ship and uh, get to your RP and your surface pen. Cause that, that makes you look more like a stellar uh, sailor. So when I was, making my decision to be a career uh, sailor. That that was why I decided to go to the Johnson's Dennis, but I had to go back to sea school because um, on the path I was going, it's a lot of schooling before you make it to that next position because uh, they're more trying to prep you and how you prepare, basically. So I ended up going back to Pensacola for another uh, three months after uh, Greece. Before I ended up going to uh, Bagram, no, no, that was Bob. Bob was that kid. Before I ended up going to Brewitts and Washington. Okay, so you, so you were able to experience the Mediterranean, which I have oh. to ima- which I have to imagine. Oh. I'm going to stay on this topic of Greece because, hey, you know, like during the pandemic, right? It seemed like either everybody on social media was trying to flex 
by either going to Tulum or someplace mm-hmm. in Greece, you know? Yep. And I'm just like looking at this like Greece situation. I, I've never been to Greece, but it looks damn nice. Oh, you know, and if I can be candid with the, with the viewers or with you, uh, uh, think of a, <laughs> The way I was living it, I was in between a poor version of, of Wolf of Wall Street and a and a black version of the Hango. Because <laughs> all I did was, uh, oh man, I was I was I was doing the most because I was twenty out there, and then you could drink legally, so that was probably my real first exposure of uh, drinking. But then I'm out there with sailors, so. It's festivals out the woohoo. <laughs> it's drinks out the out the butt, and then the culture out there. Since uh, a lot of Greek people love my personality, they would just invite you in their houses, but they would feed you too much. Though now, that was my thing. Like they, it was one of those. Uh, all right, you just ate a portion, which their their uh, appetizer was like our course, our main course, and then they're bringing out more food. I'm like, dude, I'm ready to, <laughs> I'm ready to just shut it down and go ahead and party. But then they add a beverage they call Rocky, which is like a moonshine slash a beverage that digests the food because they like to eat real late out there. So when they drink the Rocky, it's after eating like steak, potatoes, rice, because they love up rice and um, pieces, all, all that stuff and see like, Man, the gyros, because I eat so many gyros out there. But, uh, yeah, you drink the rock key, but I was more drinking it like alcohol beverages <laughs> instead of something to digest. Yeah, I was more taking shots of it just to pregame before we partying. Yeah, but, man, they eat out the wood. And the women can basically love the big guys because the big guys, they're big because they have the food, and, and that shows the women they have money. So that made it kind of tricky out there, too, though. But I partied hard. I'm not even gonna lie. I party, man. I party, phone parties, any type of party somebody could think of. I did it out there. Any type of party. I mean, between walking in a bar, dude, eating this chick out and, and taking shots, man. I mean, when I said it was epic, overseas it was epic. Yeah, the beach. New beaches slash topless beaches where people wouldn't know how to act stateside. It's the culture, so you got to be able to, you know, not act like you haven't been out there before. So <laughs> it was crazy, though. I ain't gonna lie, man. man. I poured it, man. <laughs> I mean, that's to an extent how it's supposed to be, right? I mean, oh, yeah. When in Rome or Greece or whatever. Um, oh, it was Amsterdam time something when I was out there. Cause... So what, so, and, and, and you said that that was, uh, what year just for context? Uh, the years I was in, uh, Greece was 2000, 2005 and 2006. <laughs> Sounds like some good living. I was only going to stay an extra year just to party. I ain't gonna lie. So that, that's why I had to say, if I'm going to make a career out of this, I got to get out of this. I'm going to just party, 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 and, you know. And and like you said, when you're drinking with sailors, right, which I think we all understand that there's like these, this kind of lore or whatever about people on boats in general, and then specifically the Navy people, there's all kinds of traditions around just drink. Yeah, it is. I mean, can you can you can you unpack some of these traditions that you experience? Well, I don't want us to look bad out there, but uh, I I guess I could say the sailors have quite a tolerance. Uh, my tolerance wasn't popular on their level at the beginning, but uh, they 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 kind of worked you up up to it though. But that's probably why the Marines out there getting a lot of pipes because they start trying to drink. <laughs> they start trying to drink with the sailors, then you know, yeah, and then. Then people get out of pocket because <laughs> it's definitely levels of drinking. Like uh, I, I would say, oh man, I don't know, man. I, you know how some people will say, "Hey, what do you like to drink?" 
them sailors are just like I drink. <laughs> it's not it's not beer. It's not I drink a uh, vodka. It's not I drink bourbon or I drink dark. They drink. That's that's a quick synopsis and just just how it was. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so you eventually knew that you that you had to leave the Wolf of Wall Street in Greece paradise behind, right? Which, you know, props to you because that takes a lot of discipline and kind of sort of self-restraint to 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 want to sort of uh, forego those kinds of amenities. Mm-hmm. So you decided to rededicate yourself to, like you said, leveling up in, in the, in, as, it, as it were, and that led you uh, to Washington. Yes, that, that, that's what led me to Washington because he, here we go, it, it, in, I, I'm giving you the party side of it. Yeah, I'm, I might have cut it a little short, but now in Greece, I was superseding everybody. Like in, in Greece, I, I, I got a qualified I get up there, and as air traffic control, you have a pink card. And my pink card was already signed out to the top. So had I been just sitting around, I would I would have just been there collecting a check. So I, I was always ambitious. But at the same time, I, I definitely had that mindset of work hard, play hard. So well, I was gonna say because you also told me that while you were in Greece, uh the military obviously has like boxing leagues and mm-hmm. sports leagues and whatever. And you told me that you were participating in the hoops and mm-hmm. you soccer as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the end, uh, well, the soccer was just recreational out in town with the with the local nationals because because I was meebling a lot. But uh, yeah, as far as uh, the basketball, yeah, we we had like a little navy team over there, and then uh, we actually played against their uh, junior international team. So we got to play against some high level teams, and and who was it? Was it Naples? Yeah, we played against like the the Navy team out there at Naples. We didn't get to play against the Road of Spain team because something happened while we was out there. So that was why we didn't fly out there or they didn't fly to to us like the like the uh, Naples team. They flew to us, and uh, cause we had like this Boise State type fort, like it's a blue it. I don't know why the local guy who was there uh, who owned it. He was obsessed with having that in Boise State, state type, type court. So it was kind of an advantage because, you know, people not expecting to play you on the blue court. <laughs> you know, that, that's kind of random. You used to the to the, the wood uh, the wood court. It's kind of like playing Oregon nowadays. Uh, Oregon got that random court where you're just like, man, this is, you got to look at this court for a little bit because the lines are kind of, you know, Kind of, yeah, you can't even see the three point line. It's got all the tricks. Yeah, you couldn't tell. So, so that that was kind of an advantage for us. Like when we played against uh, that local Greece team, and uh, and and that was definitely fun. Like I say, because this you playing at a high level, and uh, I guess we played against the softball team because he uh, in the military softball is a big thing. As because they nobody plays fast pitch in baseball or in the league. And then football, we didn't play against nobody there, but yeah, I was playing football because I, yeah, I, I love football. <laughs> so did your uh, hoops game progress while in Greece? Because obviously in Greece, people are pretty pretty good at hoops. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it definitely progressed. But then uh, that was really my first time running into that Euro step that became the culture of the NBA and everywhere else. That, that was my first time for sure because i i remember people sidestepping but they weren't really euro stepping where it looked like they're sliding type stuff and you know some of them were dragging the feet and i was like hey man you know that's town on the state side but their 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 rules are different because they they actually play a little bit more aggressive than the pink is what i do remember out there in, in greece when we played against their team they're they're it's similar, but the rules is a little different. How you could bang in the paint, but then they could kind of flop though, because that, like I said, a lot of the culture that that the league has is uh, or that you see nowadays when you're watching any any type of basketball, they brought it from overseas, you know. And yeah, that Euro step, boy, that that was that that took some adjusting, but uh, they were nice though. <laughs> yeah, but once you learn it though, 
once you figure it out or figure out certain people move, because we played them like three or four times, then yeah, then it's rap. See, after that, yeah, that that that's where you can hit that corner. Yeah, I'm on them real quick because you already know you already know how they play lax, how they you know where they slipping. Because we we were more when we played them, it was like scrimmaging them, you know, but then it was still a game. Though. We still had it like a actual live game with the refs with uh with the fans from the from the base and then locals who come you know to a certain extent and so yeah in the navy even in the navy did they, did they have you playing down low or did you start getting out on the wing yeah yeah i, I definitely have too because we, we didn't have as many tall guys and and then the one we had i'm trying to think of somebody he he was soft though. yeah i, I don't know other way he said he had a shot though but he was soft so <laughs> I didn't have much of a choice, honestly. And then, then I had more weight, you know what I mean? I think I was all into lifting weights around that time because when I was in Florida, I went to like 177 at like 205. So all I did was lift weights while I was out there in Florida. I had quit running as much. It was just mainly lifting weights, creatine, protein. And yeah, that, that was when I got all my size, honestly. Yeah. And then so eventually then, you made your way to Washington. Yeah, eventually after that, I went to Florida for school again, sea school to prepare me for the ship or the carrier because I was on the carrier. And uh, then I went to Washington. Big adjustment, obviously. Washington culture was definitely different than Pensacola, Virginia, and, and yeah, <laughs> and Greece for sure. And then it rained. It rained probably seventy percent of the year, so I quit being so uh, I'm gonna chill because it's raining. Just learned how to hey, it's raining. Still got to go do what you got to do. <laughs> you know, when it snowed out there, you still had to go to work. So yeah, so it, it was definitely different. And I had a Mustang, so I remember fish telling all the time. So I really got rid of the Mustang and bought a Tahoe while I was in Washington because the weather was crap. And a, and a Mustang convertible Mustang wasn't it wasn't the best vehicle for for that Seattle Washington area. Much better for Bob Beach or Pensacola. No, Diff Diff. <laughs> now I I, uh, I I had a uh, lovely experience in Virginia Beach the first night that I was there. Uh, started out with a couple of blue Hawaiians. I'll just say that. Oh man, new Hawaiians are out there strong too. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was, uh, it's a great town. I had nothing but good things to say about Virginia Beach. Uh, so you were in, you were in Washington and at this point, um, how many years in are you? In our, my time I went to Washington, I think I was five years, I was five years in. And now that you talked about Virginia, I want to say when I was out there in Virginia, we're the reason why they quit letting the females wear thongs out there because we was partying too hard. <laughs> they actually put the law out there where uh, they couldn't wear thongs on the beach, and that was when they quit letting you cuss because sailors, we was out there, you know, talking like a sailor and partying. <laughs> so they basically put it in the law, honestly, where they started giving citations for women wearing thongs and then for anybody cussing because – Sailors, man. But then, you know, when the military is in Virginia, that's 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 what keeps the economy running. Because we got what happened was it nine eleven, and after that, when 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 it first happened in Afghan, and they sent all the ships out at once, they were in poverty. Yeah, like Virginia was in a state of emergency. Anytime they didn't call all hands for for the Navy anywhere, because Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Virginia, Suffolk, that whole that whole area. Depends on the name. So that's our biggest hub, too. <clears throat> no, I mean, w without a doubt, uh, all of these kinds of communities, like you said, especially places like Virginia Beach, all the shipbuilding communities on the East mm -hmm. Coast, it's a part of the cultural fabric. It's a, it, it's a part of, uh, like you said, what, what makes the economy go. So, yes. Um, so, so look, um, the next chapter, I guess, is your next deployment to Afghanistan. After Washington, because in Washington, I had to do, we, we did a deployment. It was supposed to have been what they call, I forgot what they call it. I think it was like pleasure deployment or something where you stop in at every port. 
And that was that was part of why I chose Washington because they were supposed to stop at Australia, which was one of the main spots we wanted to hit. Thailand, Hong Kong, and all those spots. But fortunately and unfortunately, we ended up being stuck in a silk fleet where <clears throat> we were right outside our wrecks. And we just pulled into Dubai like multiple times. I think like seven times, which Dubai is awesome. It's an awesome uh, 